welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time it's a special extra episode, so we can take a look at this, the brand new Raspberry Pi 5, which has just been announced. The pre-release Pi 5 that is hiding in this white box has been sent to me by Raspberry Pi. So thanks to them for that, and let's go and take a closer look. Right, here we have our new Raspberry Pi 5, so let's get it straight out of its pre-release packaging. Very straightforward, and uh, oh yes, look, it's in a bag, it's, uh, it's not sealed. And here it is, we have a fifth generation Raspberry Pi. And over here, I've also been sent some accessories and these include this Raspberry Pi Active Cooler 4 Raspberry Pi 5, which already tells us something about the new Pi. We also have a power supply, so uh, let's get that out of its box as well. I'm sure the final boxes will not be white like this, but uh, here we go. This is a USB-C power supply, and this can output 5 volts at 5 amps, so 2 amps greater than the power supply for a Raspberry Pi 4. And we also have here an HDMI lead, a Raspberry Pi mouse and keyboard, but for now let's return our attention to the star of the show. As we can see, the Pi 5 doesn't look that different to previous Pis. If we compare to a Pi 4, the physical changes are not that radical. Although the USB and Ethernet ports have been switched back to the way they were on a Raspberry Pi 3, we do have some additional connectors, and sadly, on the Pi 5, we have lost the 3.5mm audio jack. This specifically is an 8GB Raspberry Pi 5, which will have a launch price of $80. And also at launch, there'll be a 4GB model for $60. If we look closely at the PCB, we can also see that 1GB and 2GB Pi 5s do seem to be a possibility. And when I asked Raspberry Pi about this, they said that these may be available at some point. So, let's run through the specifications, and at the heart of the Pi 5 is a new system on a chip, which is a Broadcom BCM2712. This contains four ARM Cortex-A76 cores clocked at 2.4 GHz, which Raspberry Pi claimed to deliver a 2 to 3 times performance increase relative to a Pi 4. The SoC also contains a new Video Core 7 GPU, clocked at 800 MHz. This supports OpenGL ES 3.1 and Vulkan 1.2, and has a new Raspberry Pi image signal processor for improved camera support. To keep the BCM2712 cool, as we just saw, we have this active cooler, a heatsink with a temperature control fan, and this mounts on the Pi 5 using push pins, which go into the two holes on the PCB here, and the fan then plugged into this 4-pin fan connector. Also on the top of the board, we have a brand new chip designed by Raspberry Pi. Known as the RP1, this is like a Southbridge chip on an x86 computer's motherboard, and improves the performance of connected peripherals by taking control of most of the Pi 5's input-output capabilities. Talking of which, let's do our usual tour, and on the first short edge we have a familiar gigabit Ethernet port, two Type-A USB 2 ports, and two Type-A USB 3 ports. But due to the new RP1 chip, the USB bandwidth has been significantly improved, to allow each of the USB 3 ports to operate at 5 gigabits per second simultaneously. Rotating to the first lung edge, we still have a USB-C connector to power the board, as well as two 4K micro HDMI connectors. But nestled between them, we now have a UART connector and, wait for it, a real-time clock battery connector, which is a great thing to finally have on a Raspberry Pi. Further along, there's also a 4-pin power over Ethernet connector, and where we used to have the camera connector, 
we've now got two brand new MIPI transceivers that can each be used to connect a camera or an LCD display. Also note that whilst the camera and display connectors on previous Pis were two lane and operated at one gigabit per second, these new connectors are four lane and operate at 1.5 gigabits per second. So the total bandwidth for cameras or LCD displays has been tripled. And if you're wondering if existing Raspberry Pi cameras can be used with a Raspberry Pi 5, I asked Raspberry Pi about this and the answer is yes. Existing cameras can be used with a Pi 5. But because the connector is different, a new ribbon cable will be needed and three of these will be available in 200, 300 and 500 mm lengths. You may also be wondering what's located where the old display connector used to be. Well, if we steal a close-up, we can see that it's a PCIe connector. And specifically, the connector offers a single lane PCIe Express 2.0 interface, which means it'll be able to communicate with PCIe hardware at up to 500 megabytes a second. So, rather than putting an M.2 slot directly on the board, what Raspberry Pi have done is to give us a PCIe connector that can be linked via a ribbon cable to whatever PCIe peripherals we wish, including an M.2 slot. This means that the Pi 5 will be able to be fitted with an M.2 hat to take an NVMe SSD. And I asked Raspberry Pi if there were plans for an official M.2 hat, and they replied, absolutely although an official M.2 add-on board will not be available at launch. Before we get too excited, on the second short edge, we also find a power button. Yes, a power button on a Raspberry Pi. And finally, turning to the second long edge, we find a familiar 40-pin GPIO connector, which sadly isn't colour-coded, which does surprise me, given that the headers on so many Pi clones do now have this feature. Finally, I've so far failed to acknowledge the wireless module, sorry about that. This gives us Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And if you want to look underneath, we can do that as well. The only thing to report under here is the microSD card slot, which remains the only onboard storage. So the Raspberry Pi 5 is an EMMC free zone. However, due to the new RP1 silicon, micro SD card performance has been improved, as we now have support for the SDR104 high-speed mode, which theoretically allows data transfers at up to 104 megabytes a second with a UHS-1 card. And so there we are, the Raspberry Pi 5. It's finally arrived. We've entered the fifth generation of Pydom. And so I think it's now high time for me to fit the cooler, which has got a thermal pads pre-applied, as you can see. I just need to take off the backing and uh, put this on the Pi. And when that's taken place, we can see how it performs. Right, I've now got everything connected up. The cooler is fitted, its fan is plugged in, and I've also put back in the SanDisk Edge microSD card that Raspberry Pi sent me with Raspberry Pi OS on it. If you've ever wondered what kind of micro SD cards Raspberry Pi use, whenever they sent me a board, they sent it with a SanDisk Edge card. So let's turn on the power. And here we go. Lights have come on the Pi. The fan will leap into action. There it is. Uh, the fan is a little bit noisy when the Pi first boots. It goes, I'm sure, to, to top speed. But after that, it drops back and either isn't on very much or spins very slowly. It's a very good, a very unobtrusive temperature control fan. And uh, here we are on the desktop. That was nice and quick, wasn't it? We've even got some ducks as far as I can see. That's, that's very good. And my general impression of desktop computing on a Pi 5 is that it's very responsive compared to some boards I've looked at recently. It's incredibly responsive. I just launched, for example, the fan manager very fast. This is just a, this is a good desktop experience. I'm sure you want to see the web. Let's go to Chromium and uh, could have launched it up there. Couldn't have it. Never mind. It'll work that way just as well. Here we are. This works fine. And uh, let's go to the Explaining Computers YouTube channel. Just click down there. 
YouTube's a heavy site to visit, but it again comes up absolutely fine. And there in fact is my uh, intro video. Let's just play that. Let's bring up a stats for nerds. We've gone straight into a YouTube test and uh, it just works. There's no drop frames here. People always tell me not to move the mouse around and things when I'm doing a test, it isn't fair. It doesn't matter here. We have no drop frames. Once the thing is kicked off, it's got incredibly good YouTube playback here on, on the Pi 5, which, which has to be good news, doesn't it? Let's also go to a few other places online. Let's just show you, for example, the GPU internals, when in fact, that's local, isn't it? But as we can see, we've got hardware acceleration in the browser. This is, of course, a software issue. And right now I must be running pre-release software on the Pi 5 by definition because it hasn't been released yet. But clearly this is looking good. And I think I bookmarked the aquarium because I like the aquarium. I'm getting very excited about the Pi 5. You know, it's a lovely SBC. Let's look at that and uh, bring up F11 like that. We can look at fishes here on the Pi 5. So my general first impression in terms of using Raspberry Pi OS on this board is that it just works very well indeed. It's very fluid. So let's now move on and do a few more tests. Right, shall we test the speed of the storage interfaces? I think that would be a good idea. And to do this, I've got connected to the Pi 5 a Samsung Pro SSD via a USB to SATA adapter. So on the Pi 5, let's first of all list block devices to see what's connected. And we can see there we've got the uh, SSD and also the micro SD card from which Raspberry Pi OS is running. So let's start out testing the speed of that card. I've installed HD parameters so I can bring up this command and press enter. This will give us the speed of our micro SD card. What we're going to get on the Pi 5, it's going to be that's pretty good, 85.69 megabytes a second. And if you're wondering, how does that compare to a Pi 4? Earlier, I tried the same test on a Pi 4. And as we can see on the Pi 4, the micro SD card speed was 41.15 megabytes a second. So coming back to the Pi 5, we have got a real two times increase in micro SD card speed. That's very good indeed. Anyway, let's also test the speed of the SSD. And uh, in fact, let's go back to the Pi 4 and do it there first. If we run the test on the Pi 4, what did we get? 288.68 megabytes a second. So back here on the Pi 5, which has got an improved USB 3 interface on exactly the same drive, we'll bring up the command to test the SSD and press enter. And we should get a better result. Let's have a look. It's going to be 390.95 megabytes a second. So again, a significant improvement. We've got much faster USB 3 ports here on the Raspberry Pi 5. Greetings. I've now fitted a power meter between the Pi's adapter and the wall socket. And right now the Pi is turned off, so we're currently seeing the vampire power use of the adapter and the Pi. But if we turn the Pi on by pressing its switch, still getting used to that, we can see that, uh, yes, power starts to be drawn. And just to give you a comparison, a Raspberry Pi 4 draws about 3 watts at idle and 5 watts at load. And uh, this is looking not that dissimilar, actually. We're not seeing a massively more use from the Pi, despite the fact it's got a higher power adapter. And here we are on the desktop. And yes, power use is what, 5 watts, dropping down to 4 watts. It seems to hover between about 3 and 4 watts at, uh, at idle. And uh, with that going on, all lock updates are available. We'll pick them up later, because now I want to run a processor test. I've got here in the terminal this sysbench command, which will factor prime numbers to a maximum value of 20,000, but with an events limit of 10,000. I've used this many times before. And indeed, earlier today, I ran this on our Raspberry Pi 4, which is an 8 gigabyte Raspberry Pi 4, clocked at the now default 1.8 gigahertz and running a clean install of the latest 64-bit edition of Raspberry Pi OS. So let's see what result I got on the Pi 4. 
And there we are, 3.58 seconds. So let's come back to the Pi 5. Here we are, run the test here. It should be faster. Very exciting. What we're going to get, 2.43 seconds, a significant improvement. And so at least on this Sysbench CPU test, the Pi 5 is about 50% faster than the Pi 4. And you might be wondering, what about power use during this test? So let's bring Sysbench up again, and we'll actually put the events here to 100,000, so the test lasts a bit longer, and we'll bring up the power meter and run the test like that. And we can see power use is going up. Six watts there. Still not massive, isn't it? One of the great benefits of a Pi is you get a desktop computing for a significantly low power use, which has to be a good thing, doesn't it? Yes, it seems to be sticking at around six watts. So uh, anyway, there we are. Shall we let it finish? No, I think we'll, we'll stop it. We'll do uh, that. And there we are. Power use will drop back to an idle level. And talking of doing desktop things on a Pi, let's just show you what happens if we launch several programs. I'll bring up the uh, file manager. Let's launch the terminal again. Let's launch a web browser, for example. We will come up in a second like that. There we are. And if I now do Alt Tab, look at this. This is a wacky way of moving between applications, isn't it? And uh, we're doing this on the Pi. It really does provide a very fluid, a very interactive desktop experience. Now, just before I draw my final conclusions, you may be wondering, is it possible to boot a Raspberry Pi 5 via USB, for example, with a SATA SSD connected via a SATA to USB adapter? And the answer is yes. And earlier, I used the SD card copier utility in Raspberry Pi OS to copy the micro SD card that was supplied with my Raspberry Pi 5 to this SSD. Here's the card log outside of the Pi. But we can still boot it up because if I just press the switch down here, I'm going to get used to having a power switch on a Pi. There we are. It should be coming up. I can see a little light at the back. You probably can't see that, but it is coming up on the screen. And uh, there we are. Welcome to Raspberry Pi desktop. And um, we're arriving. There we are. We booted from SSD to a Raspberry Pi. And I'm sure we can prove that if we do an LSVLK like that. You will see, yes, we are running from an SSD. There is no sight of a micro SD card. So it's perfectly possible to boot a Raspberry Pi 5 from a USB using the new faster USB 3 ports. The Raspberry Pi 5 provides a far more responsive desktop experience than previous models. And whilst we do have upgraded and faster CPU cores and GPU, my strong impression is that the RP1 chip is also doing a lot of the heavy lifting by removing I.O. bottlenecks. And indeed, we've seen in this video things like the improved micro SD card stock performance and improved USB 3 performance. And the RP1 is also giving us the faster MIPI transceivers to give us a greater bandwidth connectivity with things like cameras. And it's also providing that fantastic PCIe connector. And I think Raspberry Pi have been rather clever in putting a ribbon cable PCIe connector on the board rather than an M.2 slot. Because I've reviewed a lot of SBCs over the past few years with a Pi form factor that do have an M.2 slot on the board, but they can't accommodate a 2280 SSD on the board itself. They have to use some sort of adapter board or have something to fit the SSD. And therefore, I think what Raspberry Pi have said is to say, look, we can't fit all that on the board, so we'll give you the most flexible connector, a ribbon cable connector for PCIe, and then you can use that with an add-on board for an M.2 SSD, which I'm very much looking forward to testing, or it makes it easier to use that PCIe connectivity for other things. But what do you think? What are your first impressions of the Raspberry Pi 5? Please let us all know down in that comments section. But now, that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon. Oh.